What's up everybody? Welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. And tonight we are taking a little break from our Warhammer Quest series to take a look at Darklight Memento Mori from Dark Ice Games. This just arrived on my doorstep today. It's a big Kickstarter from almost two years ago. One of the three most anticipated games for me of um, 2018. This, Madara, and Dungeon Crusade. So, this is the basic pledge here. Um, it comes with the base game, the exploration pack supplement, and the adventure pack supplement. So we're going to take a somewhat quick look through these boxes. And we're going to start with the smallest one and work our way up to the base game. Now the box for the base game is absolutely massive and pretty heavy. So pardon me while I put this on the floor here. All right, so the first thing we're going to be taking a look at here is the Adventure Pack Supplement. Okay, so this is a expansion that came with the, the Kickstarter. It's not, I don't believe this is an exclusive, but this has four additional heroes and skill cards and some starting equipment cards, spell cards, basically everything you will need to play these heroes in your game. So the first thing we have here are the hero sheets. Now I don't know all the rules or anything yet for this game. I do know that it is very, very much based on, I'd say inspired by Warhammer Quest. And it also seems to be inspired somewhat by, I think at least, the Dark Souls video games. So two of my absolutely favorite things combined. Yeah, I think this is going to be a game that I love. So I'm not going to be able to speak much to the rules or anything, but um, just to get your basic melee attacks, ranged attacks, initiative, movement, sanity and health, special rules for the character, and then you also have your stats. You have strength, charisma, perception, agility, mind, and endurance. So this is the Revenant and Assassin. Now each of these characters has a male and female side. I don't believe there's any difference, just art. But you don't get a male and female um, character or model, which is a shame. And it's going to be really hard to proxy, and you'll see why in just a minute. So that's the Revenant, the Assassin. Okay. And then we have the Nephilim, the Barbarian, male and female. You have the Courtesan. She's a duelist. And then her male counterpart is the Cavalier. And then you have the Necromancer. I like this writing into like a bone throne or something. And my writing on a wave of bones there. And then the Necromancer has a couple sheets for his or her undead minions. So the Bone Golem, the Undead Human, the Necro Bloat, and the Dark Champion. And then another uh, special information sheet just for the Necromancer. So the Necromancer looks like it might be one of the more complex characters to play. Okay, then you get some tokens. and these Mainly these tokens are for the Necromancer's undead uh, minions. So pretty nice. Um, the tokens, the chits in this game are very thick. They seem very nicely made. They're not going to bend or warp or anything. They seem to be uh, glued together pretty well. The layers are nice. Might want to do some of these on some of these a little bit of a um, little bit of super glue on the edges. And then you get your your character tokens, just like in Shadows of Brimstone or Warhammer Quest. So now we're going to take a look at the minis, and here you're going to see why this game is going to be hard to proxy minis for. I'm going to show you one of the hero minis. So this is the Barbarian, okay? Now I'm going to show you a character from Warhammer Quest. <laughs> look at that size difference. It's insane. I don't even know what scale this is. It must be like, I don't know, 42? Because 32 are normal. Then you have Heroic 32, which is like the new Age of Sigmar stuff. But yeah, I have no idea what scale this is. Pretty nice mini, chunky, um, some pretty good quality. Not, we're not talking like Games Workshop quality as far as the detail goes. 
but it looks nice. Looks like it has a little bit of a uh, mark there to cut that off a little bit, but good detail. Maybe not quite as good as uh, Cool Mini or not, but also not as spiky as Cool Mini or not. These aren't going to hurt your hands when you pick them up. So there's the Barbarian. This is the Courtesan here. So she's a little smaller, not quite as chunky, but she still is a lot taller than a typical old uh, Citadel Mini. Okay, and then here's the Necromancer riding on his uh, wave of bones there. And then the Revenant, the Assassin, with his uh, Plague Doctor mask. I'm not sure what's going on here. I don't know if that's just an extra piece of flashing or if that is has some structural integrity to the model or not, but I'll probably end up cutting that off. I don't, I don't think he'll fall over. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe I won't. Might leave well enough alone on that one. And then we have the deck of cards that comes with this expansion. And these are all, these. This whole deck of cards is all for the um, the characters here. So you have their starting gear. So a rapier, a widow's guard a gun. So like Warhammer Quest, this is game is kind of in the beginnings of the Industrial Revolution. So you have some uh, firearms. Okay, then the barbarian starts with his woodcutter axe and then the revenant starts with his shiv and the necromancer starts with his sacrificial dagger and you have a number of spells here and i think these are all necromancy spells well you have four spells so four basic spells and then you have the upgrade cards. Now these are the cards that when you upgrade your character, you get to pick a new, new skills from these cards and each character has 20. And so these are the deck of cards for the Necromancer. Looks like these are for the Courtesan, the Duelist. Your kick skill will also make an enemy prone after damage has been dealt. Okay, nice. And then we have our barbarian skills, nunchuck skills, bow staff skills, headhunter, battleborn, wendwalker. All right. And then we have our assassin skills grapple, stealth, backstab snare trap power of the mind so yeah that's nice four new characters to mess around with i like that it's always nice to have some good options in these kinds of games these games live or die by their variety as i always say okay so that was the adventurer pack and again, I think this is going to be available on their website, on the Dark Ice Games website. So now we're gonna take a look at the second expansion, which is the one I was most excited about, the Exploration Pack Supplement. And so we have three enemy sheets that this comes here. We have a faceless one, which is kind of like a spirit. We have a Labithan, which is it's not a spider woman because she only has four legs, but some kind of insect lady. The daughter of Labithia. These demons are vicious blend of spiders and female mortals. Well, four-legged spiders, I guess. So, not a spider. And then my favorite, the mimic. And I have to say that the long legs kick attack that the mimic can do has got to be... Um, inspired by the Dark Souls mimics, the greatest mimics of all time with their kung fu kicks. So now let's take a look at what you get here. So the minis here. So here are the arachnid type ladies. Again, pretty big. So once again, like here's a little uh, Warhammer guy. So it looks like some of these, the uh, might have to do some hot water therapy. 
which is no big deal. Some of these uh, soft, more softer plastic minis, they, the minis get bent. But you just dip it in some hot water, shape it, run it under some cool water, and you are good to go. All right, and then you have your faceless ones here, these ghost type guys. Not bad. And then you have the awesome mini, uh, min, Mimic Mini. Easy for me to say, right? Very cool looking Mimic. One of the better Mimic Minis I've seen. I really like these guys. Okay, so that's all the monsters you get in this little expansion here. But the best part of this expansion is the cards. Pop these, pop these out. I hate this blister, this foam or form fitting plastic. It's, I don't know, it's such, it's a lot. There's so much wasted space in this box. Um, yeah, these boxes will probably be stored in the attic and then I'm gonna just put everything in plastic trays. So this small deck of cards here, you get uh, I think 20 loot and 20 rare loot. So the rare loot cards, of course, a little more powerful. Rapier, Katazashi, a Katakana, Sword of Madness, a Twin Axe, a Death Maul, the Eye of the Primordial, the Gladiator Belt, Black Knight Breastplate, Saint's Helm, the Devil Slayer. Oh, look at that. Kind of looks like the uh, the uh, Great Sword from Guts or uh, Berserk or Dark Souls. And then you have your regular loot. So daggers, more pistols, trapped demon soul, a demon soul. Tentacle of the primordial and angelic scriptures. All right. And then this is the deck of cards that I was most interested in. So these are environmental cards and these just add kind of like random encounters to your dungeons. And so let's take let's take a look at one at random here. An abandoned meal. A hearth built into the wall still burning, cooking the contents of a large stew pot. Someone must have left this in a hurry. If you wish to eat from it, you must use a search action and roll a d6. So these just add kind of non-combat encounters to your dungeons, making unpredictable things happen. And I always like stuff like that. There's 40 of these. I would, of course, like to see 80 of these. Uh, hopefully this is something that they can expand on greatly because this is the kind of stuff that adds um, replay value, I think, to these games where they adds the chance of it feels like anything could happen. And then you have your encounter cards here, which tells you what kind of things you're gonna be fighting, whether you're in a boss room probably, or just a regular encounter room. All the way down, see, so it does scale from only one hero, not player, but one hero, all the way up to four heroes. So that's really nice. You can, I've heard that you can actually play through this game using only one hero. Um, I will probably play two heroes, because I find that the most fun but you don't have to play a party of four if you are a solo game player. All right, so that was the exploration pack supplement. Pretty nice. I think these aren't exactly square, so it fits only one way. Now I'll get the big guy up here. This box is absolutely massive and it is obnoxiously shaped. <laughs> it's um, just for size reference, I'm gonna grab this. So this is a normal um, Fantasy Flight Games box that most of their games come in. And as you can see, it is dwarfed by the Dark Light box. And as far as thickness goes, 
So yeah, just to give you a little bit of scale of how absolutely massive the um, the box for Dark Light is. And it is absolutely packed full of stuff. That is for sure. But again, it does have a big box of minis and the minis are in that, that form plastic, which just takes up so much space. I wish, really wish people would stop using that stuff. So we have our rule book and as you can see, it's filled all the way to the top, all the way to the brim with stuff. The rule book's pretty nice. Quality pages, color. Um, the covers are a little thin. They're no, I don't think they're any different at all than the regular pages. So I do wish maybe they were a little more cardboard-like. Um, what I'm probably just gonna do is print the rule book from the website and have the covers laminated and then spiral bound just so it'll be easier to pass around and and not get messed up because that's one thing. I don't really sleeve cards or anything, but I do like the, when the rule books are a little sturdier, especially because I like to throw them in my backpack and you know read them on the bus or at work. So you get your contents, your minis, your plastic, your cardboard for the dungeons, okay, your character sheet, your different types of doors, your um, dashboard to where how you uh, set up your hero. Then your cards. There is a massive amount of cards in here. Your chits. So you get a picture for everything. So if you don't know what something is, you can just look and find the picture. I like that. It does come with one page of errata. So one book or one rule was missed. But it's so you can tell they actually did a really nice check after everything was printed up. They found a mistake and they tell you what page it's on. So I just slipped that into the rule book there. So you have your basic rules, you have some optional rules, and you have advanced rules. You have ways to play this completely co-op or with a GM. And with the GM stuff, like in Warhammer Quest, you do get some role-playing stuff. There are stat checks. And there are ways to role play to have non combat encounters with characters, different ways to do things like jumping, climbing, swimming, lock picking, spotting, setting traps. So the GM can test your skills on certain things and gives you a good outline of how to uh, maybe add your own. And then some other ways for hazards and settlements. So there is a complete settlement phase in this game. So you're not just going in dungeons. You're going in dungeons and then you can travel to three different size settlements. You have, um, what is it? Um, hamlets, villages, and towns. And depending on what size you go to, there'll be more special locations, just like Warhammer Quest. I know I'm comparing those two games a lot, but even on the back of the box here, which I should have shown, we'll show after we unpack everything, it says that this game was inspired by the classics from the 80s and 90s. So my kind of game, I think you could probably substitute 80s and 90s for inspired by the classics made by Games Workshop, but that's probably just my opinion. Then you have your quest book. So the quest book actually has two different ways to play the game. You have a whole bunch of random, or not random quests, but a whole bunch of, of one-off quests that you can do. And they all have special rules, special objectives. Some of them have special monsters. But then as you get to the back of the book, you have a whole um, campaign, like story-like thing that you can play through. And this walks you through just about everything. So you actually spend quite a bit of time in the campaign before you even get to a dungeon, just setting up your first settlement and making some choices before you go into the dungeon. And each chapter of the um, campaign looks like it ends with a story dungeon. And depending on how you go through that, you'll progress through the story, making more choices, making your settlement looks like improving or, or having different encounters at the settlement. And it's pretty long. So this campaign, this story campaign is 10 chapters long. And at the end it says it's the end of act one. 
So hopefully they'll be able to just release you know more books with printed things inside to where they don't need to have a bunch of cards or or um, sheets. They can just print new rules in books that we can download and print off ourselves. So that would be a really easy way to keep this game going and a very inexpensive way for the developers and for the game players. Okay, and then we have our settlement location book. Now, th all of these are available on their website. So these I'm gonna actually print out nice color and have laminated so the players, so we can just pass these around and not have to worry too much about uh, this small book because this book will definitely get uh, beat up pretty quickly. So here are the settlement locations. We have a tavern, a church, the stables, the marketplace, a healer, the accursed guild. And that's what your characters are. Your characters are called accursed. The outcast sanctuary, the blacksmith, the tattooist, a jousting grounds and a house so you can actually buy a house in the settlement the dark enclave the apothecary the crypt and the castle and the castle looks very complex it's like three or four pages long just in the castle so yeah looks like there's actually quite a bit of stuff to do in the settlements i really like that i love settlement events huge fan you guys know since all that warhammer quest stuff i'm doing right now I love games that go into dungeons and then take out of the dungeon and allow you to develop your characters. And speaking of developing your characters, here is the character sheets. So we have your stats, sanity, health, insanity, severe wounds. Uh, you can get injured, so you can have critical injuries. I love critical injuries in games. Your skills and spells, your attacks, resistances, evasion, armor, and then on the back of each character sheet, you have a settlement sheet. And this lets you keep track of what your settlement is called, the size, um, special locations that are available there. And then you can keep track of your party, the reputation and their living expenses. So it looks like it's gonna be a pretty complex game. I'm really excited about this one. So now I was gonna go through the punch boards. We have our Dread Wheel. This is somewhere to keep track of time and what the monsters do. And the, the back side is the darkness wheel. And then you have these uh, chits here. So it looks like a boulder, bookcase, pits, levers, uh, trap doors, barrels. Looks like an armoire, a desk, a campfire, maybe a bonfire perhaps. Um, some rubble, looks like maybe uh, top-down columns, some magical portals, ladders, uh, looks like a fire, I think a fireplace there. So lots of, lots of really neat looking tiles. And then real quick, we'll go through. So here's all of the hero and monster cards that you get. So the monsters our crawler, crawler egg, a seeker, a deviant. Oh, that's straight out of uh, Dark Souls 3 there at the, um, the Cathedral of the Deep. The devourer, the lurker, the lurker scout, the scorn savage, scorn hunter, scorn shaman, scorn brute, the grim cultist, the dread worm, the wailing wall. Looks like a fog gate. Yeah, sorry if I'm com if I'm comparing this so much to Dark Souls and uh, Warhammer Quest, but those two things I love, and I think it's pretty clear that the um, that the developers love those things as, as well. A Shadow Lurker, Cultist Overlord, a Scorn Warlord, a Scorn Berserker, Colossal Dreadworm. Now you don't get minis for everything. You don't get minis for I think only for one of the bosses and the others you get tokens. Now you can buy the bosses separately. I did not. Um, I can just proxy them with some of the uh, wandering monsters from Massive Darkness or use the tokens. I don't care. Maybe one day I'll get the, the rest of the plastic, but for now I'm not going to worry about it. So then of course the other hero, the starting heroes, and they do come with male and female sides. 
You have the Black Knight, the Exorcist, the Outcast, and the Blood Warlock. And then you get four reference sheets that tell you how to uh, give you a good reference guide to how to play the game and special um, status effects and that kind of stuff. I do really like that there are male and female variants. Like I said before, I think that's important. People like to feel represent, represented in the games that they play. And, you know, Warhammer Quest never had a single female hero. So it is nice to see um, games kind of take advantage of that. Uh, make that make that wrong into a right. So now we have the giant punch boards. I mean, these things are as big as a box. They're huge. So these are your dashboards, your player dashboards. And this is where you keep your uh, equipment for heads, chest, feet, arms, belts, heirlooms, accessories, utility, right hand and left hand. Okay, more bookshelves, stairs. And the stairs on the other side is like a pentagon, a pentagram summoning circle perhaps more dungeon accessories all right and then we have our first punch board of passages and doors the doors are absolutely massive i don't know where the the plastic to hold them up is probably in the mini box so we'll take a look at that in a minute but i'll punch one out here so we can put that in one of the uh, holders when we come to it and of course, everything is double-sided with different art and different things on each side. So here's one of the bigger objective rooms here. So there's a little guy, yeah. Quite a, quite a bit bigger, I think, than the objective rooms in uh, Warhammer Quest. Um, at least the squares are, the squares are bigger. Okay, double-sided, so a more of a boring side and then an exciting side. Same here, you got different kinds of doors. Let's punch one of these out, what is that? That is an oil flask. Okay, same on both sides. Uh, Portcullis. Here we have a door that like, looks like it's being ripped or it's been shredded open or something. Okay. Kind of like looks like a throne room or a kind of a chapel or something. Um, a jail cell, perhaps. More junctions and passages. Another different kind of door there. There is a uh, one of the boss chits. And a crypt room, a bridge over some kind of haunted fog gate water. And then this has like a little NPC character. Looks like the arrow is for its facing. Maybe there'll be some kind of rescue missions or something. And another rooms. Looks like an altar room, a throne room with some nice pillars and Shading and lighting there. One of the boss tokens. So that will yeah, so show you how he's facing. I definitely have a mini I can proxy in for him. And the, the big monster minis in, um, in Massive Darkness should be the right size. So the heroes of Massive Darkness are definitely too small. Oh, and more dungeon rooms. Very nice art on these, very happy with the way these look. And they're thick, nice and big. Anyway, so I'm gonna put these punch boards on the floor here. And then we will take a look at, let's see, the cards here. Lots and lots of cards. All right, so we have our journey. Let's see what else is in this stack here. Okay, so journey cards. Uh, 
These, I believe, must be for when you're traveling to or maybe from a dungeon to a settlement. Different things that can happen on your way. Looks like you have uh, good choices, bad choices, ambush, leeches, bile of the intermundus, mushrooms, the village. So quite a few there. That's a nice, nice stack of cards. You have your event cards. Death Toll, nice. Each of these has a bespoke piece of art. I like that. Oh man, looks like looks like there's a lot of really cool stuff to discover in this game. Ooh, more events. You know me, can never have enough random events. Developers, if you think 40 is enough, make it 80. I will pay. We'll always gladly pay for more cardboard. More events. So yeah, man, awesome. Okay, there's a ton of stuff. And then here's how you figure out what kinds of things you're going to be fighting. We've already taken a look at these. Again, it scales from one to four. Okay, then you have your boss encounters. So this will kind of tell you what you encounter probably in the objective room, in the quest room. So let's see, so one of these, if you're playing with one player, you would fight one Shadow Lurker and two Scorn Hunters. If you're playing with a whole party of four, a Shadow Lurker, 1d6 Scorn Hunters, 1d6 Lurker Scouts, and one Scorn Brute. Okay, and then you have your dungeon deck. So this is going to show you how you uh, lay out your dungeon, your randomly generated dungeon. Sacrifice room, a torture room. Looks like the, each, each, some tiles looks like have different elevations. So you might get some bonuses for attacking. Shows you how to place your doors. So pillars block line of sight. So they're, the art on the dungeon tiles actually does mean something, so that's nice. You have your crypt, your chapel, arena, sanctuary, hall, and then looks like you have different objectives. Okay. Very again, very very similar to uh, to Warhammer Quest. All right, so let's see a marketplace deck. like maybe this deck was split so we'll put that aside there so this is rare loot and regular loot so we can just combine the cards from the other uh, expansion into here to have almost double the amount of rare loot okay lots of good stuff again when they were developing this game the the item cards had a little sentence of lore at the bottom and at some point during the development they decided to take it off i really wish they would have kept it on because it was really good and it was a lot like dark souls where you got to learn a lot about the item and where it came from and the world from the lore that was on the card so i'm really hoping that they can at least maybe release text versions of that lore so we can read about the world that these guys have created um i think that's important i like it when items have have uh little little pieces of flavor text on them Okay, so this is our regular loot here. A cursed skull. It looks like that does have nothing. You probably just have to keep it and it just clogs up your inventory or something. That's pretty cool. Okay, heirloom. So these are starting items probably that your characters start with, like a starting, a special starting item in um, Shadows of Brimstone, a razor, medallion, something that just adds a little bit of personality to your character. And then this is the kind of like the uh, the way you heal. And kind of like the lantern, I think, in uh, Warhammer Quest or um, Shadows of Brimstone. Okay, we've got, looks like this might be the uh, main marketplace deck here. Marketplace, marketplace. Oh my gosh, you got this whole deck, plus these cards here. 
So there's your marketplace deck. I mean, that is just giant. So much stuff to buy in addition to all the loot. Oh man, this game is not hurting for variety, guys. Let me tell you. All right, lots and lots of cool things to buy and discover. Looks like um, some spells here now. So we got, let's see, spells. Witchcraft. Okay, so now we're getting into the uh, the skill cards for the different for the different um, heroes that come in the base game. And again, there are twenty of each that you can use to level up your your heroes. And you have miracles, healing, offensive, and defensive. Oh my gosh, more marketplace cards. These cards feel pretty good. They're not linen finish. Uh, maybe they are. The The edges are a little rough, maybe. Um, but for the most part, I think I'm very happy with the quality of everything in this game. Um, some blank cards, maybe. You can make your own things. Interesting. Huh. That's actually kind of cool. So you can have your own items and stuff. You can say what it is. They even put the little icons down here so you don't have to write it. You can just check it off. How much it is, the name, a little piece of art there, what it does, how much it weighs. And you get an absolute ton of those. So that's actually pretty cool. And then this is your starting gear for your different starting heroes. You have your broken sword, huh? just like Dark Souls. You start with a broken sword, cleaver, throwing daggers, a knife, a cursed skull, a femur. Who starts with the femur? Interesting. The gold censer and the libro sanctum. Okay, and here, miracles. Let's take a look at an offensive miracle. The golden wings. This replaces your movement phase. Cannot be cast if you already moved. Place yourself with any free square up to six away. Gain a plus one to hit, plus two to damage on your first melee attack. Pretty nice. Offensive. Healing. Defensive. A deck of spells here to use. And then 20 skills that you can level up your character with. So yeah, once again, an absolutely a ton of stuff. And that's the cards. So now we'll take a look finally at the minis and then we will be done. So I know this video is going a little long, but hopefully people are finding this interesting. So there is your box of minis and your dice, cubes to keep track of like stamina and health. So here's your um, door holders and you can slide those in there. Nice, they just kind of slide in. They don't, so you're not gonna mark up your doors. And uh, once again, absolutely massive doors. There's a little uh, warm request hero. So everything is on a much larger scale in this game. That is for sure. Okay, so you have your four heroes here. Pretty good minis. I've seen better, but I'm happy with them. So she, this one has the witch or something, has a little problem standing up. She might need some hot water therapy. That guy's cool. I like him a lot. Very nice. And here's some of the um, some of the creatures here. Let's see. So here's one of the big bosses. This guy. Cr 
crazy body worm guy. Human centaur worm. Some giant scorn brutes or something like that. Pretty cool. Predator looking. And then we have a whole bunch of uh, smaller guys, these little scorpion type dudes. Some sh looks like some shaman. Some small dudes with some spears. I wish that people would stop making minis with spears because all that means is we're making minis with bent weapons. <laughs> So many minis, so many games come with minis with spears, and the spears always look so dumb because they're all they're all jacked up. Looks like that guy has some kind of chakra weapon or something. Guy with um, a spiked cleaver and a shield. Some little like snake looking dudes. Lots of door holders, some spiders, those uh, split zombie guys, here's that uh, cultist. And yeah, so that's about it. Lots, lots of stuff. This game is absolutely overflowing with things. So yeah, well, I hope you guys liked that. I know that's a little long, but hope you guys liked taking a look. Um, hopefully I can get this to the table and get it played soon. And all right, well, that's gonna be it for this episode of the Dungeon Dive. We will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.